So I get this question a lot through email, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. And that is, how often should I train for maximum gains? So how often can you train each muscle each week for maximum results without overtraining? So this is a very prevalent question throughout the entire fitness community. Some people say train every muscle once a week, some say every muscle twice a week, and some are in between. So every one of these groups has their own arguments. But let's look at the facts using science. So what I primarily want to look at is muscle protein synthesis. This is what has to occur for your muscles to grow. You elicit muscle protein synthesis by training your muscles. For example, when doing a bicep curl, given there is enough resistance, the muscle protein synthesis in the biceps is elevated. This elevated state is temporary, however, and that is the key to finding out how often you can train to get as many elevated states of muscle protein synthesis throughout the week of any given muscle. Remember, the more often you can get a higher muscle protein synthesis, the better it is for muscle growth. This is exactly what is being discussed in this meta-study. A meta-study is a literature review of many different studies about the same subject to get the most prevalent outcome to come to light. I'll put this meta-study in the description in a link if you want to check it out yourself. So if you look at this study by Intrisano on Yara Shesky, if I said that right, you can determine that four hours after training, the muscle protein synthesis, it's set as NPS right here, is increased 50% above baseline. The baseline is what you have throughout the day without doing anything. So it is increased with 50% more, but 24 hours after working out, it is increased to 109%. And after these 24 hours at approximately 36 hours, it has returned to 14% of base line. And this basically means that after 36 hours, you're almost completely recovered in that muscle. So the NPS will only be elevated for a maximum of 36 hours. So if you would have waited a whole week to train this muscle again, we're talking about the bicep in this study, by the way, you would have wasted a lot of days during which you could have targeted this muscle for another elevation of NPS causing more muscle growth. For example, you train your biceps and back on a Monday. You rest this muscle group on Tuesday and perhaps even on Wednesday, giving you 48 hours of rest. Then it is time to hit those same muscles again, as they have been given plenty of time to recover according to the study. 36 hours was enough for muscle protein synthesis to go down to baseline and for you to be able to trigger it once more. So on Thursday, it is time for another back and biceps. But wait we still got two more days of rest. Again, 48 hours, which is longer than the 36 hours needed to fully recover. So, theoretically, you could even go again on a Sunday. This means that training every single muscle two times a week would be more beneficial than training every single muscle once a week. Exactly because you want to cause as much muscle protein synthesis throughout the week as possible and not leave any room for it to return to baseline for an unnecessary amount of time. But then Tuesday, again, there's two days in between, so at least 48 hours of rest in between every single muscle group. Now the reason I have implemented a rest day is because you can never really truly isolate all of your muscles. For example, when doing back and biceps, you will most certainly target more than just the back. What you will also target is muscles that you will use during leg day. For example, the core, the lower back, the balancing muscles, etc. Especially when you're doing deadlifts and squats. That's why you cannot train every single day because some muscles would not get the proper 36 hours of rest before actually being fully recovered. 
So that's why I implement at least one rest day. Now, guys, this is something that would work for me as this really looks like something I have done in the past. What I recommend most people to do, especially beginners, is not train every single muscle group twice a week, but only the weak points. So if your back is a weak point or your chest is a weak point, only train that muscle group twice a week. This is for beginners, because if you look closely, shoulders isn't in there. So what you could do if your chest is your weak muscle group, you move one of the back and biceps out of the schedule and replace it with shoulders instead. This way you still get a lot of training frequency, but less of the same muscle groups and focusing more on the weaker muscle groups. So why do I still sometimes get DOMS, also known as delayed onset muscle soreness, for longer than the 36 hours of muscle protein synthesis after training a muscle group. I'll make a separate video about what muscle ache exactly is, but to keep it short, DOMS soreness can last up to 72 hours, as can be seen right here. In the multi-joint group, which means exercises done like the bench press, the squats, the DOMS return to baseline levels after 72 hours post workout. But this is not correlated to the actual recovery of peak torque. Simply said, the strength output of any given muscle. So what you can see here is that in the single joint exercises such as the bicep curl and tricep extension, the peak torque, which is PT, was lower than 24 hours than baseline. In a multi-joint group, it was returned to baseline already. And peak torque, remember, is the amount of strength that your muscles can put out. So DOMS can last up to 72 hours. However, peak torque returned to baseline within 24 hours post heavy resisting training. So in between 24 and 48 hours, despite you still having muscle ache, your muscle is already able to do the same amount it was capable of before the training. So this means that you could bench press exactly as much as you did two days earlier. So if you bench press on a Monday, then either on Wednesday or Thursday, you will be fully recovered and you will be able to do the exact same weight you did even though you might still be having muscle ache in the chest. So peak torque seems to recover in between 24 to 48 hours after workout. Ultimately though, the more trained the athlete is, the less damage occurs to the muscle fiber, which ultimately leads to less recovery time needed. Most of the studies that I've shown you have been done on trained athletes who have been training for at least a couple of years. So if you're a beginner, train every muscle group once a week and gradually move to a higher frequency training given that your nutrition and lifestyle support your recovery. This is why bro science is still so prevalent nowadays. There are just so many variables in life such as training age, physical age, nutrition, rest, supplement use, and so forth, that the results of these studies may not apply to some people, as I mentioned before. Let's just say that if you are a healthy, trained individual who has been lifting for a few years and you're looking for a way to optimize your training frequency, you will most likely be better off training muscle groups twice a week compared to just once a week. Now, this is not just one study, but a meta-study, comprised of multiple studies throughout recent history. Of course, you are free to roam the literature to find contradictions, but the reason I make this video is to give people another perspective and to understand why I thrive under high-frequency training. This is basically to show that it's not that rare to train frequently, and that studies have been done to study its effectiveness. I have done this for many years, and it keeps yielding results for me. 
I love training, so doing it often is something I really enjoy doing. Yes, overtraining or overreaching, they are real, but it is not as common as people think. Of course, our, our lives are different and we work different jobs, demand certain things of our bodies in different ways. But if you want to be the best you can be, you have to do anything in your power to make it happen, to unleash your full potential. Now, I will make a lot and many more videos like this because this is something I enjoy doing. Fusing my own experience and opinion with science for you to decide what you want to do with it. I like to do discussions, I like to do debates, and uh, I like to let people know what I think. So let me know what other subjects you want me to cover and I'll do my best to make another Backed by Science video. I hope you enjoyed this and don't forget to stay golden.